This is probably an effect or a transition that you've seen a million times and might not even realize that it was being used. And I guess we're calling it like the zoom ramp effect. Now I am sure there are better ways that you could do this. And I'm sure there are also plugins that could do this for you, but I'm gonna walk you through how I do it and how I save this so I can use it over and over in some of my short form edits. Alrighty, let's go ahead and hop right into it. So I've got DaVinci open. I've got a few clips already set up here on my timeline from a recent project. Now I'm gonna say that this is an intermediate-ish level tutorial. If you're newer to DaVinci, you can definitely follow along, but there's gonna probably be some areas that feel a bit uncomfortable if you're especially newer to Fusion. Now, as I mentioned, there are a million different ways to do this effect, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the effects tab, go to the effects side menu and drag and drop in an adjustment clip. Now, the cool thing about the way we're gonna go about doing this is that the length of our adjustment clip and the frame rate aren't going to matter. So no matter what frame rate or what kind of videos you're working with, doesn't matter, go ahead and size up your adjustment clip to be whatever length you would like it to be. Once you've got that all done, go ahead and hop into the Fusion page and make sure you're hopping into the Fusion page for the adjustment clip. Once you're in Fusion, we're only gonna need one note for this, so it's gonna be pretty straightforward. Go ahead and add in a Transform XF note. Hold down the Shift key, insert it into your pipeline in between the Media In and Media Out node. And from here, this is where a little bit of familiarity in Fusion is gonna help. All we're going to do is we're going to right click on the size property on our transform node, go to modify width and then anim curves. Now, if you're a bit newer to fusion, you can think of modifiers as kind of like the advanced settings for different properties in the fusion tab. So what we've done is we've unlocked the advanced settings for our size property over here in our modifier tab. And we've done it using an anim curve or an animation curve. Now, the cool thing about anim curves, if you haven't used them before, is that they apply changes or keyframes to a specific property over the duration of a clip, which is why I was saying that we don't need to worry about frame rate or length because no matter how big our adjustment clip is, this effect will stretch and apply for how long or how short our adjustment clip is. So there's a couple things we need to change. First, we need to go over to the source dropdown menu and change it from transition to duration. And then we wanna change our curve option from linear to custom. Okay, and so what we've done here is we've said we would like our animation to place over the duration of our clip, and we're enabling the custom control options for our spline. Now, if I were to scrub this real quick, you can see we start at zero size and we go, we go pretty far zoomed in. That's because our default values for our animation curve for this property are an offset of zero and a scale of five. What does that mean? Well, I, the way I like to think of it is I like to go back to uh, good old algebra. And in essence, when we're looking at this, we're looking at Y equals MX plus B, kind of. Where B is gonna be your offset and M is gonna be your scale. So if I were to remove this real quick and go back to our size property, what's gonna happen is we're gonna start at zero and we're gonna scale all the way to the size of five. So if I didn't want it to be five times the zoom at the end and just say, you know, like a zoom level of one, we can set that to one and now we go from zero to one. Now what I'm gonna do is I want this to actually start zoomed in and to be constantly pulled out and zooming out through the duration of our clip. The key to a lot of really smooth transitions and motions is that it's one continual motion. So as we're going from clip to clip, we want this thing to be consistently pulling out and zooming out. So again, I want you guys thinking Y equals MX plus B when we're thinking of what values we want these to be for our animation. So for me, I would actually like our ending zoom to be at one. So I'm gonna set our offset to be one and I would like our starting zoom to be 1.5 times the starting zoom. So I'm gonna set our scale to be 0.5. Now what this is gonna do is actually going to zoom in starting at a value of one and ending at a zoom value of 1.5. So if I bounce back over to our tools tab, we're close, right? If I were to go over one more frame, then we're gonna be at 1.5. So if I wanted this to do the opposite and start zoomed in and then pull out, all I have to do is invert this. And now we go from a zoom of 1.5 and end on one. 
Now, as is, this is actually a great way to set up like a continual zoom, you know, like if you have somebody doing a talking head and you just want like a slow zoom, this is another great way of setting up an adjustment clip to do that for you. But we want some kind of ramped motion. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our curves here, click on one of these points. And what I would like to do is drag the ending handles up and down. And what this is doing is decelerating quickly, holding a mid-level zoom, and then ramping back out to the end of the clip. And if we want some finer controls, we just need to select our transform node, go over to the spline menu over here, if you don't have that open, that's this guy up top here, open up our lookup curve, and then we need to resize our window. Then if we resize our window here, now we have our lookup curve. And so you can make this as sharp as you would like, just go ahead and feel it out whatever you feel works best. If I go ahead and scrub through, we got a quick zoom out, hold, hold, slowly zoom in, then boom, ramp back down. Now, the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the settings tab and turn on the motion blur. If you want it to feel more or less impactful, you can always mess with the spline curve here, change the handles, even, you know, if you wanted to, you could try adding some midpoints, probably wouldn't recommend it. You could increase the scale a little bit as well. So if I type one into the scale, now we're starting at a zoom level of two, and then zooming out, it is really up to you. But the cool thing about this effect is that again, because we've done it on an adjustment clip and because we're using the anim curve modifier, what I can now do is I can go back to the edit page and copy this adjustment clip over and over and what we're gonna do is we're gonna get like a continual zooming out motion. Pretty slick, right? And so again, depending on what song you're syncing up to or the, the pace of the edit, we could bring this clip in or you know, we could even extend and push this clip out. And because we set up our adjustment curve correctly, the edit is still gonna work the length for a clip. And before you head out, let me show you two quick things that can improve your edit and make your life easier in the future. So we've got it ramped out, zooming out. So if I wanted it to zoom the other way and have a zooming in motion, can go to my adjustment clip and just uncheck the invert option. And now we'll start zoomed out and then we'll slowly continue to zoom in. And the other thing that will be important for this to look good is to change the location at which it is zooming from. So for instance, on the starting clip, we're zooming out from the middle, but in reality, most people are probably gonna want to see Mr. Seth Abner's face. So what we need to do is for each adjustment clip and depending on how motivated you are, go to your transform node and change the pivot location to the focal point of that clip. Or you can you can you know move the clip underneath the adjustment clip and size it that way. But when we change the pivot point, we change where it's zooming in and out from. And we might even need to bring this up just a smidgen more. And now his face stays in frame the entire time. The last thing that I'm gonna suggest real quick is once you've got your adjustment clip set up correctly, save that sucker. Grab one of them, bring it into your media pool, Name it. Oh, you see, I already got one in there. Uh, zoom ramp effect. And now once it's in your media pool, you can drag and drop this to uh, exist anywhere in the timeline so that you have this effect. Oops, ready to use. And then if you wanna save it across any project, what you're gonna wanna do is go to your media pool, go up to these three dots up top here and make sure show power bins are on. Power bins are a folder structure that live across every DaVinci project. I've already got mine open over top here. And then all you're gonna wanna do is go over to your newly saved generator and drag it into your power bins. And now you have it for any project. I know we moved pretty quickly through that, so let me know if you have any questions and I hope this is able to help you guys out. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.